Welcome or welcome back to Creating Inner Beauty. I just got back from my two week honeymoon to Italy, which was a dream come true. And that's really inspired me to create a video today that's all about reflecting on what I've done on my personal and healing journey that help, has helped me manifest the things that I desired in my life to help it feel soul fulfilling, which included my soulmate husband, our dream home, and now our honeymoon. If it's your first time here, I'm Liz and I'm an intuitive coach and healer for conscious and spiritual women. And in my work, I love helping women heal, step into their power and gifts and create soul fulfilling lives that they love. Now, so today, in today's video, I'm really going to talk about the six areas I have been really focused on in my healing and spiritual journey over the last six years that I feel have helped me step into my power to heal, to tap into my gifts and manifest the things that I wanted to experience in my life that feel really fulfilling for me. And my work is definitely based on my own personal experiences and what I have found has been helpful in order to transform your life. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of a framework that I've used in order to go from a place where you might feel stuck or unfulfilled to one that feels like it really lights you up and um, fills your heart and your soul with joy. That's, that's really my goal. And I know I've gone through a period in my life where I felt very heartbroken, stuck, overwhelmed, to now this period of feeling much more fulfilled, very in love, very passionate about life and having the kinds of experiences I wanted to experience. So I wanted to reflect on my journey and share some things with you that I hope will be helpful for you in your journey as well. So here are the six things that I feel were the most helpful reflecting back on the healing that I've done. And then I'm gonna add some bonus tips at the end as well, because I just can't help myself. First, the first thing that I feel has been really important on my healing journey is really prioritizing taking care of my energy. As an empathic, sensitive woman, as a, a healer, someone with intuitive gifts, which this may also describe you, I really started prioritizing making sure I was keeping my energy really clear, really grounded, really centered, really protected. And um, that has laid a foundation for shifting my life to become more and more positive as my energy my energetic vibration has risen my life has risen and that is usually the connection that occurs there how did i do that i committed to a morning ritual practice where i really ground and center myself i do intention setting every morning and i do something every morning that shifts me into a high vibrational feeling such as gratitude um, I also have practices that I do throughout the day that help me clear out any energy that doesn't feel like it resonates well with me and protects my energy field. Now, I talk a lot about this in my work with clients, and I also have a free mini course that you can download that is full of morning rituals that you can use to start to really take care of your energy. So I'm gonna leave that down below for you if that is a process that you would like to start on. But I started that process of committing to morning rituals and taking care of my energy every day during a very low, heartbroken period in my life. And it started to transform my life step by step. And I really credit that as being the foundation to bringing me to a whole new place, a whole new phase in life, which included this wonderful honeymoon to Italy. Now, secondly, the second thing I focused on was developing a real understanding of how my intuition works and how my guides, my angels, the divine communicates with me and leads me on my path. 
you know, when we're in the process of transforming our lives and wanting to manifest and create something different for ourselves, we're partially doing the work, but there's also a component where we're co-creating with the universe and we will be guided to the experiences that we're meant to have for our healing, for our growth, and ultimately to experience what we want in our lives. And in order to follow that path, you have to have a sense of how your intuition works and how the universe speaks to you. So I really focused on developing my understanding of that, setting aside time to listen to my intuition, to my heart, developing my relationship with my guides and with the divine so that I could be in communication and co-creation with them on my journey. Now, thirdly, I focused a lot on understanding my chakra system and how it was working, how it was functioning, and healing and balancing that. You know, our chakras are very connected to um, the functioning of both different areas of our body, but also different areas of our lives. And so the more you can understand how your chakra system is working and work to balance and heal that, the more you're gonna experience ease and flow in all of the different areas of your life. So really cluing into which of my chakras was functioning well, which was not, where was I blocked, what I needed to do to release and heal those blocks was very transformational for my energy system. And then as your energy system transforms, your life transforms, as I mentioned before. So that had a huge impact on what I've been able to experience and call into my energy field. Okay, now after I did that chakra healing and balancing work, I dived in deeper into deeper kinds of healing. So what is that? What does that include? For me, and likely for you as well, if you're on the spiritual and healing journey with all of my experience with my clients, with myself, these are things that will likely come up in your journey. Um, I started to more clearly understand the experience of my inner child and do inner child healing work. I worked on releasing core wounds and limiting beliefs that I've had around myself, around the world, around love, around relationships, around what's possible for me, around um, who I am, all of the different levels of that. I've done some deep work on that. I've done some shadow work around reclaiming parts of myself and integrating um, parts of myself that I wasn't as comfortable with, such as my anger, such as being able to set boundaries with people um, around my uh, reclaiming my own assertiveness, my own worth, that kind of thing. And also doing past life healing. That was fairly transformational for me as well. Um, looking at parts of my current life experience and how it may have had roots in past life and um, doing deep transformational energetic work around that has made a difference for me as well um, and helped me release a, a number of patterns that I was having trouble releasing any other way. Now, number five step, five uh, area that I've really been focused on is um, coming into a deeper level of self-love, really developing my relationship with myself, um, raising my own standards for my life, my friendships, my, my family, my experiences, my relationships, knowing that I'm worthy, coming to a deep belief that I'm worthy of good things, and making self-care a priority. Um, those coming into more self-love has really been the key that has unlocked the beautiful experiences I've had in my life to date. And it's because you need to feel worthy of good experiences in order to let them into your life. And so doing anything that you can in order to really develop your relationship with yourself and come to a sense of self-appreciation, self-compassion, self-love that is really going to be transformational. Okay, uh, sixth 
area of life that I really um, have focused on in my journey has been diving deep into understanding the process of conscious manifestation, co-creating life with the universe, and using practices that really resonated with me to help set and focus my intentions. For me, this has been journaling, writing down my intentions, doing manifestation meditations, doing work with the moon cycles, um, and really uh, making time in my weeks, in my months, to prioritize intention setting and then using those intentions in a very conscious way in order to filter where is going to shift, where is going to spend my time, energy, and intention in my life. So that's been a hugely instrumental part of the process as well. So, you know, this is sort of the overall framework that I always come back to whenever I'm trying to manifest and bring in any kind of new experience in my life, no matter what it is, whether it's in my love life, whether it's in my abundance life, whether it's in my spiritual life and my personal growth, it's all of for me, the journey has been going back and checking in in these areas and doing anything I need to do in order to realign myself. You know, looking at where's my energy? What do I need to do to feel more happy, centered, aligned, and high vibrational? You know, how can I communicate with my guides more and leave more space for my own intuition? How, what do I might I need to do and heal in my energy system, in my chakra system? Um, what deeper work do I need to do on my own limiting beliefs and wounds that might have been activated in this manifestation process? Um, where can I love myself more? How can I take get better care of myself? And what can I do to set my intentions and really stay in alignment with them? This is the journey that I go back to over and over again, and that has helped me manifest um, the beautiful things I've experienced, as I mentioned, my, my soulmate husband, um, my dream work that I'm doing now, our dream home, our honeymoon, um, and what and the, the system I will use on an ongoing way to bring in any further experiences that I would like in my life. And so this is also the system I teach my clients in my Radiate Coaching Program. I take you through each of these phases of life, each of these um, parts of our journey in an in-depth way to help you have the tools and um, practices that are going to really open up your energy field to all the things that you want to experience. And so I will leave a little bit more information about my program down below. I do have a wait list going right now for the next time I run my program. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I teach in these different areas, um, feel free to leave your information through that link and I'll, I'll send you a little bit more information about uh, the program. And now let me add a couple other things I thought it was important to discuss on um, what I have felt has been helpful in my journey thus far. So first thing is that I've really come to understand and recognize that whatever I want to experience in the outside world in my life is meant for me, is divine, and is possible. And so I honor that and I see it as part of my spiritual development and what my soul would like to experience. But I ultimately keep in mind and know that the most important thing is my relationship to myself and the divine. And so I'm not attached 
to, oh my God, I have to get this particular thing. I have to find my soulmate. I have to have this relationship. I have to find, you know, this dream house, the have this honeymoon. My focus hasn't necessarily been on those things. I want those things. I desire those things. I feel that they would add to a soul fulfilling life for me, but my focus on the day to day way is on feeling aligned with myself, listening to my intuition, connecting to the divine and, um, incorporating like spirituality and feeling, um, feeling like I've tapped into something sacred every day and um, that that is really what my journey is about. And the more that I do that and the more that I feel in alignment and feel that I am true to myself, the more I have opened to the desires that um, I do have and want to experience in my life. I hope that makes sense. So um, my goal in saying that to you is I always want you to feel like you can set intentions for your desires because they are sacred and holy and things that your soul wants. But I encourage you to make your focus in a day-to-day -day way around feeling good, around feeling connected to your soul, and around feeling connected to what is divine for you. For me, that is working with my guides and working with specifically the goddesses. Um, and that has been very healing and powerful for me. But let that be whatever feels divine for you, whether that is a conceptualization of the universe in general, whether that is angels, whether that's God, whether that's uh, Jesus or any other divine figure, whatever that is for you, let that be your guide in a day-to-day -day way. Stay connected to that. Okay, second thing is that um, I really feel that it was important that I committed to it in a consistent way to doing the work of um, feeling good and, or I should say, helping myself feel better and healing myself. And I was persistent about that and committed to that and prioritized that above um, almost anything else. So I, started a morning ritual and I continued it. Maybe not perfectly, but when I would lapse, I would come back to it and start again. I would journal consistently. I would seek out healers and coaches if I was having a trouble in a certain area that I couldn't figure out myself or I felt like I needed some energetic help, um, some extra energy healing. I really have over the last several years made the consistent focus of my life um, healing and improving myself and raising my vibration and um, not giving up on that. And that has really made a difference. So I just wanna encourage you to really stay focused, stay committed, recognize that any work you put into your journey and your process for yourself is going to benefit you and you will see the, the results of that. And I'm always here to support you on your journey and help you stay um, consistent and committed on the path. So just let me know any ways I can assist you with that. And then um, lastly, I kind of mentioned this already, but I, I wanted to pull it out a little bit more. I really feel that connecting to healers and coaches and therapists that I resonated with on my journey has been very profoundly transformational. I'm a big believer in self-healing, in spending time in a day-to-day -day way, in reflection, in um, energy work, in um, 
doing things that feel joyful and aligned for me, but there have definitely been times when I needed to seek out outside assistance, outside perspective, intuitive guidance that I was having a hard time accessing because I wasn't objective about the situations I was going through. And so I really encourage you to reach out if you to whoever resonates with you if you feel like you need help in your journey but also to be very mindful and discriminating around who you connect with really feel into who resonates with you who you feel like is there for you and supportive of you and who allows you to go through your own process and um, is interested in facilitating you tuning into your own intuitive knowing, not just telling you a bunch of stuff that uh, may or may not resonate with you. So I just really wanted to put in a little plug there for listening to your intuition about that, that process, reaching out when needed, and being discerning about what you take in. Okay, so I hope some of these tips have been helpful for you, that it has helped to kind of hear uh, the things I have focused on my journey to uh, get to this point in my life, which I'm pretty excited about. And please let me know if you have any questions about any of these areas. I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. If this video was helpful to you, please give me a like so I know that it was and I keep making more content like this. And give me a follow if you'd like to get more videos, hear more from me about spirituality, personal development, healing, growth, self-care, and more. I'll see you next time.